Hey guys, happy Monday, start of a new week. So we're gonna kick this off with a veggie heavy brunch. I am gonna do some tomatoes with 2% Daisy Cottage cheese. I'm gonna steam some asparagus. I have some sweet potato mash that I made, which I'm gonna have with some of my homemade everything bagel seasoning. A couple of duck eggs, which I'm gonna poach in that gorgeous little uh, steamer pot or poaching pot that somebody recommended to me and it has been fantastic they come out really really good every time and then I'm just gonna have some of my tamarind powder on the asparagus and some cracked pepper on the tomatoes and that's it that is going to be brunch now I woke up feeling a little eh and I'm actually hurting quite a bit and for it to be this early in the day I think what I'm going to do after I have this is I need to plan ahead for tonight. I need to do some prep. I need to do some pre-cooking. And I also, I was looking in the outside freezer and I am down. I don't have any uh, freezer meals left. I don't have any soups, any chilies, any stews. So I think I'm going to do some of that today. Something that I can just kind of put in the instant pot and let it go and then portion that out. I need to kind of go through the pantry and the fridge and see what I have, what I can use up, what I can utilize to make those, and we'll see what happens. But I'm going to try and cram as much of that in as I can earlier in the day. And then tonight I have planned and tracked for a tandoori chicken breast with some, uh, some rice and broccoli. I think I'm going to pre-cook the rice. I'll get the chicken marinating. And then hopefully by the time I get to dinner, uh, I won't, you know, it won't be a problem. I'll put the chicken in the air fryer and, you know, there won't be a whole lot of prep to do with that. But that's the plan. But let's see what happens. Let me do this first and then we'll go from there. So if you haven't seen this little pot, the poaching pot that I'm talking about, basically it is a little stainless steel pot. And what you want to do is you want to bring the water to a soft boil, not a big rolling boil. So this is what you want. On my particular stove, that's setting 4.5, okay? So you want your water, nice little rolling boil. All right, then the lid goes on the top here, okay? And you have your cups, which I've just rubbed a little bit of butter on the inside. You could use a cooking spray. And these just go in. Now these are duck eggs, so they tend to be a little bit bigger and sometimes I have to take some of the white out. All right, you wanna put those in, put your lid on. Alexa, set an alarm for three minutes and 30 seconds. Three minutes and 30 seconds, starting now. And we'll be done. All right, while that's going, I'm gonna get the asparagus in the microwave. This is a Good Cooks microwave steamer. I got this for $5 at Dollar General. And basically, you have your steaming tray, you put some liquid in the bottom. So I've got that with water. And then you just put your top on and you can choose whether to vent it or not. For things that are a little bit crunchier, um, you can open the vent and if you want things to be a little bit softer you can close it or close it however much you want which will just tell you how much steam is going to stay in here. So I'm going to put this, now I've squeezed the fresh lemon juice and then I'm going to steam it with the lemons in there. That's just a personal preference, you certainly don't have to. And I'm going to put this in the microwave for three minutes. Okay, everything's done. So these are my gorgeous little eggs and then I've cut up two of those tomatoes. I've measured out the cottage cheese, so I'm gonna have a third of a cup today. Normally I'd have a half a cup, but I've got so much other stuff that a third of a cup will be fine. I have reheated a half a cup of the sweet potatoes, and then whew, 
There's my asparagus. <laughs> Sorry, you got all steamy there. So the asparagus is all ready. All I need to do is put everything together on the plate, season, and we're good to go. I'm telling you, I love this little pot. So if you aren't familiar with them or you haven't cooked with them before, duck eggs, besides being larger, have a much tougher shell. And if you've ever tried to peel a soft boiled egg, soft boiled chicken egg, you know that can be difficult. And for me, with the trouble I have with my hands, duck egg peeling <laughs> anything less than hard boiled, it's, uh, it's quite tricky, quite difficult. So this pot, makes them perfect like the white is all done and I wanted to show you what the uh what it would what it looks like in the inside now let me change hands here okay so if you're not a fan of runny eggs you're not going to like this but um they are in general yeah perfectly cooked and that's in so on my stove on that setting Three and a half minutes is all I need to get a beautiful poached egg. I have a partial plan. <laughs> so I'm going to have, I have a chicken breast thawed out and I'm going to do a tandoori chicken. And with this, like the whole spice packet, you would have a whole chicken, eight pieces. And obviously I'm just using one breast. And then normally you would use yogurt, oil, and vinegar. And I'm just going to use lemon juice and uh, a tablespoon of oil. Now this you want to marinate. It says marinate and refrigerate for 1 to 24 hours. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started and that way it'll be ready to just cook for dinner. I haven't had this brand before so I'm looking forward to seeing how nice it is. It says that it's you know it should be a pretty authentic spice blend and I like tandoori chicken so let's see what we got. With that I'm going to make uh, almost like a a mix between a tzatziki, which is Mediterranean, and a rata, which is an Indian yogurt sauce. So basically, I'm just going to do Greek yogurt, lemon juice. I am going to put a little bit. I have a piece of one of those mini cucumbers left over. So I'm going to grate that up and then put some dill in there. And I'm going to make that as a sauce to go with the chicken and everything tonight. And that's I can do that right before, but again, the less that I try to do, if I'm not feeling well, the better. So this sets up really nicely. I'll just put that in the fridge and it'll be ready. Now, when I was looking for, and we'll get to the chili in a second. When I was looking for this, I found a half a bag of red lentils and I had bought them to make these red lentil tortillas and I tried them months ago and they were really nice and they would be completely zero on core because all it is is red lentils that you want to soak anywhere from six hours to overnight. So I'm going to go ahead and get these soaking and you can just soak them in water. You can soak them in a stock. You put a little bit of salt in there and then the following day you blend everything everything up and the consistency becomes basically like halfway between a pancake batter and a crepe batter and you pour that in the pan spread it out cook it like you would a thin pancake and they make these really nice zero tortillas zero point tortillas and then I can do I don't know, some kind of, I'll work out what kind of taco I want to do with it. So I have all kinds of different proteins. I could do some fish tacos. I have a recipe for a fish taco with this gorgeous Asian slaw. Uh, I don't have any purple cabbage. Okay, I'll figure that out. But I'm going to get these soaking. So it is equal parts. So if it is a cup of lentils, it's going to be a cup of liquid. And I'm going to do these with, uh, I think, some chicken stock. And then uh, I'm going to get this in the Instant Pot. So I'm going to do a chili. At Kroger, I had found, this is the 99% fat-free ground turkey breast 
So this is zero. And I have some pinto beans. I have about a half a bag of black eyed peas. I have about a half a bag of 11 bean soup mix. <laughs> so this is like clean out the pantry. Um, I have a packet of chili seasoning. Now normally, so if you look at your chili instructions, it's like ground beef. So I've got the ground turkey, a can of tomato sauce or a can of stewed tomatoes. And I didn't have either, but I do have just a normal limited ingredient, sorry, limited edition uh, tomato soup. And so there's our ingredients there. So I'm going to use this. And then I have about half of a white onion. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that up and use that. And yeah, I'm going to put that, this in the Instant Pot, which if you're not familiar, you can actually put dry beans. You don't have to soak them overnight. You can just put them in there and away you go. And basically I'm going to set that on to cook. And that's it. And then... Hopefully, when it comes time for dinner tonight, so I'm going to have the tandoori chicken, and I'll have made the yogurt sauce, and then I think I'm going to do a brown rice. I might do a I might do a black rice. I don't know. I will see what when I get there. Um, and I'm going to do some steamed broccoli, and then yeah. Oh, the other thing, I bought a ton of fruit at Kroger. So I'm going to, once I get all of this done and in the fridge and going, then I'm going to do a big fruit salad. Okay, so I'm going to get these lentils soaking first. I've measured out a cup of the red lentils and I added a teaspoon of dried cumin, a teaspoon of dried coriander, and a little bit of salt. And I have a new I haven't tried this chicken broth before. Um, the last time, I'm not a Sam's Club member, but my cousin is. And the last time I went out with her, she took me with her and I bought a box of this. I do like making my own stock, but it's nice to have these on hand. So I'm hoping, because this one is like no artificial flavors, no added MSG. Um, you know, sometimes, I don't know how you guys feel about chicken broth, but sometimes I feel like it either tastes like nothing or it's almost a little bit, I don't know, acrid maybe? I, I don't know. But <clears throat> I'm going to try this one. So let me see. So let's smell this. Huh. That's weird. Are there carrots in there? Oh, there's carrot juice concentrate. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So chicken broth, sea salt, natural flavors, chicken fat, carrot juice concentrate, which is the first thing that I smell, onion juice concentrate, and celery juice concentrate. So <laughs> this this might uh, weird some of you out, but remember I live on my own and I'm just cooking. I'm, this is just for me. So I'm going to take a little sip out of the container here. Hmm. That's actually really tasty. I mean... You know, for a, how many calories? 10 calories a cup. No fat. One gram of protein. No carbs. Um, you could, you could zhuzh it up a little bit and actually have this as like a sipping broth. It's not as strong as bone broth, but it's definitely better than a lot of the other ones that I've tried. Okay, so I've got a cup of lentils. So I'm going to put a cup of liquid. My hands aren't always the steadiest, so I don't want to, like, go super fast. <laughs> All right. We're going to put that in there. Fantastic. And then I'm just going to stir this up a little bit. And this is now going to sit up overnight. And I'm going to make the tortillas with that tomorrow. Okay. So let's do this chili, not chili. <laughs> uh, I have the black eyed peas and the 11 bean soup mix and the pentos in here all rinsed and ready to go. And then I cut up the onion. I have my tomato sauce. I have the turkey breast, which that's the great thing about the Instant Pot. I'm going to put that in there frozen. 
I'm going to put the beans in there dry and it's going to all cook up beautifully. Now, yes, you could cook the turkey first and, you know, you could crumble it up. You could do whatever you wanted. Really, I'm going to cook it on the slow cook function, so it's not going to be a problem. Then I opened the chili seasoning to taste it and eh, it's okay. Um, it's actually, it's not very chili-y. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use some of my umami powder. This is just a, um, a mushroom umami powder. I like it. I, I use it anytime I, I want to sort of punch up the seasoning of something else. So I'm going to put some of that in there. And the only thing that I don't know is how much liquid I'm going to need to add because I haven't measured out my beans yet. Uh, I just dumped all of the bag into here to rinse them. So I need to see how much of this I have to work out how much of the broth I need. So, and it doesn't have to be exact, but I was like, all right. So that's one cup. Two, three, ish. Okay, so that's fine. Now the, I will say in this soup mix, the lentils and the uh, split peas and things like that, they cook much faster than everything else. So they are basically going to become like mush. All right, so we have our bean mix in there. And then let's put in our onions. Tomato soup. I'm going to put in all of the chili seasoning packet and <laughs> I saw something the other day a friend sent me and the lady was um, cooking something on TikTok and she was like and just measure with your heart <laughs> so you don't need a whole lot of this I'm going to put in what's about half a tablespoon I can add more if I need it but I don't think so. Okay, so if I have three and a bit cups of beans, I think I'm gonna do, because I have the tomato sauce, let's try this with six cups of liquid. And if I feel like it's getting a bit, because I like mine to be quite thick. If I feel like it was getting a little on the thick side, then I can add some more. three and a bit okay. that will cover the bit of beans and then let's open this one all right six you know what? There's not a whole lot left in there, so we're gonna we're gonna go seven cups of stock. I can always put a little cornstarch in there if it's a bit loose. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in my Chef IQ, which is like an instant pot, and I'm gonna put that on slow cook for mm, I'm gonna say low for three hours, and then we'll test and see what it's like. All right, let's keep on trucking. This is gonna be the yogurt sauce. So I have a quarter of a cup of Greek yogurt. Now, just in case you shop at Sam's, like I said, I, I went with my cousin and I bought a couple of the Members Mark Greek yogurt. And I actually like that on par with even like a Faye. Um, it is, it's nice and thick, which is great. It works beautifully in two ingredient dough. So if you have a Sam's 
Um, it is, it's worth trying if you're looking for, you know, a more solid Greek yogurt. Kroger's personal brand Greek yogurt is good too. And I like the Greek gods as well. And I just buy whatever's on sale. <laughs> but okay, there we go. So a uh, quarter of a cup Greek yogurt. This is just what was left of that piece of mini cucumber. And I've just put that over the grater. So we're going to put that in there. All right. And then I'm going to do, this is lemon juice. I had bought some lemons on clearance on like discount produce and they were starting to get a little hard. So I try to go ahead and juice them so that they're not wasted. Um, I'm going to put a tablespoon of lemon juice. If you're using a lemon concentrate or an artificial lemon, or you just don't want that much in there, you can of course adjust that. And then for the dill, I think, oh, that's a new one. I don't know where my open one is, or maybe I ran out. Okay, so, oh, I love the smell of fresh dill. I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of dill for for that amount and again if you're not a fan of it don't put it in there put something else in there put more or less if you like so that is going to make up the little yogurt sauce and basically I'm just going to stir that up set it in the fridge and then the last thing I need to do is the tandoori marinade for the chicken Okay, last thing for getting stuff. Well, last thing before the fruit salad. <laughs> um, let's do this tandoori chicken. Now, I had to open a new container of this Greek yogurt, and I wanted to show you what I meant. See how thick that is? That is very sour cream texture, and you want a thick-bodied yogurt when you're doing the two ingredient dough that may be why I don't have a problem with it being sticky if you've seen any of my quick drop biscuits um, or anything like that I am using equal parts generally a quarter of a cup mm, well no that's not true for the biscuits I use a third of a cup so a third of a cup of this yogurt or Kroger yogurt um, or Faye if it happens to be on sale and a third of the flour so that's that's what that looks like straight out of the container now I was trying to I was originally thinking I was going to marinate the chicken breast whole and cook it in the air fryer but I think I really want to be able to enjoy more of the marinade so I'm going to cube the chicken and put it in the marinade all right so let's look at this I opened it ahead of time so you guys don't have to watch me struggle with that okay so here's what we have in it Salt, cumin, coriander, garlic, ginger, red pepper, onion, citric acid, nutmeg, mace, ground black pepper, and undisclosed herbs. <laughs> so this is, basically it's saying there are six servings per container, and uh, they've counted each serving as being zero calories, zero sugar, zero pretty much everything other than some sodium and some carbs. So... I think what I'm going to do with this is it basically says combine your oil, vinegar, which I'm using lemon juice for, and yogurt into a bowl with the mix and then make shallow slits into the chicken. But I'm going to cube it and then marinate for 1 to 24 hours. So I'm going to marinate until dinner. I think... So the first thing is I'm not <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of the texture or the taste of most oil. So what I decided to do was use some toasted sesame oil and I'm going to use that in the place of olive oil and I'm only going to use half a teaspoon. I just No, sorry. <laughs> that was the that was the wrong um measurement there a half a tablespoon I had written on the back of the bag to that I was going to use a tablespoon but the sesame oil has a stronger flavor so I won't I don't even think I need that much so I'm going to do half a tablespoon of oil and then I'm going to do a tablespoon of lemon juice and 
I, you know, you just really want enough yogurt to kind of be able to marinate it. I'm thinking probably about a quarter of a cup. And then what I'm going to do with this, well, the first thing I'm going to do with this is we're going to taste it. So that's what that looks like. All right. Let's see. It smells good. Whew. I can smell the pepper. All right. Let's see here. Oh, that's good. Mm. Okay. So, so the first thing that I get is the salt, but sea salt is the first ingredient. So I'm not surprised. Then I get the pepper and I can tell there's a little bit of red pepper in there because there's a little bit, little, little bit of heat in the back of your throat. And then once that kind of goes away, you get the cumin and the coriander and, you know, what you kind of more classically think of as sort of those Indian spices. Um, that's good. I like that. I think what I'm going to do is put... So remember that my taste buds are funny because I, I have long-haul COVID symptoms and uh, I never got my full sense of taste back from years ago. So I like things stronger than most other people. I don't know how much you would use of this for yourself, but you could put less in there and then taste it. And if you were like, oh, that's not quite enough, you could put more. But I think what I'm going to do, because there's not a whole, whole lot in here. I think I'm going to use half of, the, uh, of what's in here. Um, and I'm going to try it like that and then see what we go. But that's, uh, judging from other spice mixes that I've used before, half a packet is probably right. So here's what I'm going to try. A quarter of a cup of yogurt, half of the spice packet, a tablespoon of lemon juice, and a half tablespoon of sesame oil. I'm going to cube the chicken and then put that in to marinate. Okay, I am glad that I am doing this now because I am definitely not going to feel like this later. So everything that I wanted to prep is done. The chicken and the yogurt mix are in the fridge. The lentils are soaking. The chili mix is in the slow cook function on the Instant Pot. And I've done all my dishes because I guarantee you I'm not going to feel like doing them tonight. And if this is, if I'm feeling rough because like I know the weather is supposed to, we're supposed to get storms coming through starting tonight. And that might be why I'm starting, you know, I'm feeling rough now. But if tomorrow was bad or worse, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I don't want to end up with like a sink full of dishes for days because I, didn't want to do them now. <laughs> so I just did them. Okay. I am going to have a couple of mandarins and then I think I'm just going to chill for a while. I need to do some work. I am recreating the tutorial videos for Healthy, the, the app that I work for. And so I'm going to start those now and I'm hoping to have a big chunk of them done before the new year. So I'm going to do some, uh, almost like a, a test, a draft to now. And then I'm going to send that over to Sarah, who I work with on all these things. And if she's good with everything, then, you know, I'll kind of get those underway. And we're basically going to put the entire user guide in video tutorial format as well. So if you learn better reading, you have the user guide. If you learn better watching or listening to something, then you'll, you know, you'll have the videos as well. So that is, that's my big work project for the end of the year. All right, I'm going to have these. Going to do some work. And then, what time is it? Okay, so I will probably have dinner in about, I'll start cooking dinner in about four hours. My guess on the timing for this chili was wrong. <laughs> it says it has 48 minutes left on what I set it for, which was high for three hours. And I just took the turkey breast out and sort of broke that up. And then I could feel that a lot of the beans are still quite firm. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 
an extra one hour onto it and then I'll check it again at that point. The good thing about the slow cooker function is that you don't have any pressure. So just like a normal slow cooker, you can take the lid off, you can adjust things, you can do what you need to, you just put the lid back on. All right, so I'm going to increase this because you can change the time and temperature. So I'm going to increase this by another hour, put the lid back on, I'll check it in what will basically be an hour and 45 minutes, and then we'll decide what to do from there. It does mean that this is still gonna be in use, so I have to think about what I'm gonna do about dinner since I won't have this to use which is not a problem. I have plenty of options. I mean, I can, <laughs> I can put stuff on the stove or I actually might have, I think I have some 90 second rice. Yeah, I'll look while this is cooking. All right, time to do some dinner. So, uh, <laughs> an update on the chili. I didn't think about this. I didn't, I didn't plan this, you know. Um, Yes, you can cook beans in a shorter amount of time from dry if you pressure cook them, Lisa. So putting it on the slow cooker version means that, yeah, you need to cook them a lot longer. <laughs> uh, I checked it at right about the, just about the four hour mark and they're getting tender, but not there. So I actually went ahead and put that on for another two hours. I I asked Google, you know, how many hours normally would it take to cook dry beans in a crock pot? And the answer was four to eight hours. So two more hours will give me six, but it does mean that I can't use the Instant Pot to do the rice. But that's okay, because I have some 90 second black rice, so that's fine. I'm going to cook some broccoli. I have my yogurt mix that I made earlier, and then I have my marinated chicken pieces. So I'm just going to cook the chicken on the stove, and then when that's all ready to go, I will microwave the rice, steam the broccoli, and that will be dinner. So as I'm getting ready to cook my chicken, I decided to check on my lentils. And I'm looking at them and I'm going, I, that doesn't look like last time, what did I do wrong? So I went back and checked the recipe. <sighs> it is two cups of liquid to one cup of lentils. This was one cup. So I now need to add another cup of liquid to this to do it properly.